Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for everyone for asking me to be here today. Um, I'm just going to start, I'm going to show you the film first, actually, and then I'm going to talk about it afterwards. It's one of a series of films that have I've made recently with my son here, it's all the films me, Damien James, with our, um, for a project called Two Gypsy Land, but I'm just going to show the film and then I'll talk more about the actual project afterwards. I'm going to talk a bit about this whole project because actually it's, uh, it's something I've worked on for quite a long time and it's also something that my husband's worked on for quite a long time. Um, my husband actually did a map, Gypsy Land, for, uh, in 2007 for uh, Venice Biennale, which to me um, curated Paradise Lost Pavilion um, and it's something we've talked about I know the name in itself is pretty contentious and that's one of the reasons we use it because we feel that we are entitled as people to call ourselves what we like so if I want to refer to myself as a gypsy then that's entirely up to me um, in the UK we also have Irish travellers, Welsh travellers, Scottish travellers People refer to themselves as other names as well. They also call themselves needies, which is an Irish word for calling yourself a gypsy or a traveller, as well as referring to yourself as a Romany also. Um, so these are some of the ideas for Two Gypsy Land as a project. We're wrapped up in this. Two Gypsy Land is actually the name of a book by um, Elizabeth Robbins Pennell, who um, was an American lady, and she wrote this book, and it was the... Um, journey from America through to the UK into Europe looking for the real gypsies in inverted commas. Her uncle was actually Charles Godfrey Leyland who um, wrote quite a few books about gypsies and about British folklore. Um, so from this time, particularly in Victorian times, we have this sort of gypsy lorist thing starting to develop. So a lot of the mythology and a lot of the stereotypes were reinforced during this time and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to sort of use this book um, because it's also this idea of everyone's always looking for the most authentic gypsy or Roma person that there is and it's something we have to deal with all the time constantly. We are a very diverse community and we often, I often get questioned about my own identity just because of what I look like. We're an international community as well. Um, so some of the things in Two Gypsy Land, it's all, in fact all of these things were issues that I was trying to deal with but also working in the UK because extensively since um, meeting Tamir in 2006 I've worked mainly in Europe so this was an opportunity for ta to take a lot of what I'd learned but put it into an English context. Um, it was, it has been a, what the Arts Council call a strategic touring programme um, which means that it went to different places. So it started at 198 Contemporary Arts in London, which I was very happy to work with because 198 was actually set up because of the Brixton riots that happened in the 80s. So to me, space and place is very important. Um, so it was, for me, a good place to start this touring show. The difference with it was that I did not make the work and then tour it. Each place informed the show. Um, so from London it went to Glasgow, um, there's a massive Roma population that have come to Glasgow from Europe um, but they do not engage in um, the arts there at all whatsoever and so one of the reasons I, that Tramway um, wanted to work with me was to engage with the Roma community. Um, which did happen because I worked with a local dance troupe there of girls, but what we did was they did their very traditional dancing, but then I helped them create um, t-shirts and things that they wanted to do, and they actually then did their own thing with hip-hop and stuff like that. So it was this idea of actually showing people tradition, but also that we are not trapped in history, we are living, breathing people that are in this century now happening, this moment. Um, and that was very interesting because everyone turned up, all the families turned up, but also I worked with um, different travellers from Scotland, so they had a lot of historic material as well as current material. Seamus McPhee was one of the artists who was in the last Roma Pavilion, and he brought a lot of material also about where he lives, a place called Bobby Mill in Scotland, which was actually a social experiment by the Scottish Government to make travellers in Scotland settle. Um, so that was part of the journey, so that's where it started. Um, we went to Peterborough, uh, which has also got 
is based in East Anglia. Peterborough is a city within East Anglia, which has got the largest population of gypsies, Roma and travel people in the UK. One of the main issues there was contested space, which obviously as a community we always have to deal with. It's something historically we've had to deal with. We currently have to deal with it all the time as to where we're living, where we are, where we've seen. Um, our physical presence is often unwanted wherever we are. Um, so this was the thing that came up there. But it also, I worked with lots of other people. So I worked with a place called the Green Backyard, which is reclaimed land, which now has an organic garden on it. I was asked to do a graffiti thing there, um, which I worked all day on a piece of work. But that enabled me to have conversations with local people. A lot of the work we are doing is working with as many different people as possible because it's really important to talk to everybody. Most of the work that I do is not inside a gallery space. That is for a reason, because we need to engage with the public. Because if we're going to change perceptions and we're going to make people think about things differently, we need to have those sort of conversations. And a lot of that happens in Peterborough. And also the work that I produced when I was at Metal, which is, uh, they recently opened a new space there because Peterborough is what the Arts Council call a cold spot, um, which I don't believe was actually true because there's actually quite a lot of artists and things working there. Um, but I also use the internet a lot. So I engage with people over the internet to take part in the work as well. So we asked a series of questions for people to engage with, with that. Um, we then went to Bolton, and Bolton was an interesting place because at one point it was the heart of the textile industry um, in the UK. Uh, it has the oldest socialist club in the UK as well, and there's a whole group of people there called the Bolton Whitmanites who are really into Walt Whitman's poetry, and they organise this thing once a year. Um, so I got involved with the people there who were involved in a lot of social activity. Bolton also has a history of being very accepting of people from different minorities or different communities or people that were running away from persecution of other things, religion or whatever. Um, so it was a very interesting place to work in. Because of the connection with the textile industry, which obviously in Victorian times was fed through the slave trade, um, Part of the work that I did there was about talking about slavery within Europe with my own community because it's something that nobody knows about and it's, not, it's very often not talked about. So it's talking about history but also talking about present context because it's no good ignoring the fact that history does not affect present context. And if you don't talk about things, they do not go away. There are major problems in America, and slavery is discussed there as an open topic, but in Europe it's still a very closed topic that no one wants to talk about. And if we look at my community situation within Europe, in certain countries, this is really what the problem is, because people are still seen in a very low position within society because of their historical position, something that needs to be addressed. Um, and then we went back to London, and the film that you've just seen is London. So. Um, I had things from the Illustrated London News from the 1870s and it had all stopping places where gypsies and travellers were. So the film was made at London Fields, Hackney Wick, Mitcham Common and Gypsy Hill and also you can see the road signs. What we're also talking about is historically we've always been in these places. We haven't suddenly popped up like aliens out of space. We have always been in different places. People need to recognise this. They haven't suddenly appeared from nowhere. And all of these places wouldn't be called that if we hadn't been there historically. And actually, if you go to London and you go over the West Way, you will see a traveller's site. No one else would choose to live there because of where it is, because it's got all these main roads crossing over it. Um, but that is a really famous site. It, the illustration of Latimer Road is in lots of different gypsy lawyerist books and it's used a lot, but that site has always been there. So it's just trying to make people recognise this. The other place that you saw on the film, which had some, there were like wagon wheels and stuff on it, that's actually in Hackney Wick. And there was a great controversy over a lot of the sites in Hackney when the Olympics were being, when England got the Olympics, because lots of gypsy sites in London, in that particular area, had to be moved. And there was a massive issue about this because of the money involved. 
So we moved around, we did all this filming. I worked with a long time collaborator, Tara Darby, who took a lot of, a lot of photographs. And um, the lady that was in the film with me is Ronki Asanawa. Now, Ronki is really interesting because my husband also has a friend called Lincoln Cato. Uh, Ronki is Nigerian by birth, but she was raised by gypsies and travellers in England, and she's not alone in that. So what we're also talking about in the work is that we are an inclusive society as well. We've often taken other people in and made them feel welcome, which is not the case with us. Most people don't want to make us welcome. In fact, the more unwelcome they can make us feel, the better they seem to like it. Um, so that's what we're talking about. Me and Ronki have now gone on to make a new project, which is called Bound by No Nation. Um, I use the Roma flag a lot in the work that I do, and the reason I use it is because we do not have a nation, but we have a flag. So we're not bound by any nation at all whatsoever. What binds us together is being human beings. Thank you.